Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're going to talk about Ethereum. Will the tension be relieved? If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Now, I mentioned previously that those holding the bullish with a couple panda bears and no retreat, no surrender NFTs, that you would receive a third into the Cryptoverse NFT. Today is that day. So again, if you're watching this at this point and you don't have them, it's too late. But it is for people that were already holding them in their addresses. You will receive this NFT. For those that want to see it, it's called Time is on our side. Again, it's not for, I'm not selling it. It's just being airdropped to those people. Uh, I'll play it for you just so just so you can see it. I, I think it's kind of cool. You have the, the clock over here. It's called Time is on our side. And, and perhaps you might want to turn down your volume. So basically, the the general idea is that time is on our side, and and we're we're sort of just waiting, <laughs> waiting for the egg to hatch and and for for crypto to to really really take over. Um, so let's go back to the Ethereum chart, and I I want to talk about this idea of will the tension be relieved or not because it is something that I've I've watched before, and and we we've actually talked about this scenario before as well. So at this point, you have Bitcoin coming in at 38K and you have Ethereum at, at just over $2,800. And arguably, Ethereum has more or less been holding this somewhat dubiously drawn uptrend trend line for, for quite a long period of time. I mean, except for the, this wick, which is not a very liquid wick, I, I would imagine. I mean, you know, we've held this trend line for a while at around, at, first of all, at around 1300 and then maybe at a 1400 and then at 1600 and 1700 and 2200, 2500, and now we're at it at around 2700 or so. But this isn't the first time that Ethereum has experienced the same type of uptrend. Okay, we've seen it before, and namely, one of the times we saw it was over here during this like year-long reaccumulation phase, right? And what you had when when Ethereum was was sort of holding holding the line here, back over here, we, we first got above it at around six dollars or so, then we retested it at seven to eight dollars, and then again at, at nine dollars, and then again at ten dollars, and then again at, at 13, 14 dollars, but then we actually fell through it. So here the tension was relieved, right? We no longer felt the tension to to have to hold that uptrend line. To be completely honest. I don't like it when when assets get into these uptrend lines where everyone's watching them because a lot of times they, they don't eventually hold. And one nice thing about seeing them break down, and perhaps me this is me rationalizing, is that it sort of relieves that tension or the idea that we have to continue holding it for the market to remain bullish. I mean, here's a great example where we fell below it and then and then we rallied back up just a few months later. There's another example of that over here though as well. And, and here's an example where, I mean, I don't know how you want to draw it, but you could draw it something like this and say that we were more or less holding this uptrend channel as well. Okay, so we held it at 149, and then again at 219, and then again at 302, and then finally we, we fell below it at around 658. Okay, so both times the tension was eventually relieved, right? And I mean, it makes sense. It, it the, the asset won't just go up forever, okay? So, I mean, even if we bounce here and put in new all-time highs um, without the relieving the tension, I mean, eventually you'd have to imagine this would, this would have to break down and we would go into some new pattern. But the reason I want to talk about this is because there's two, there's two very different scenarios that could play out if the tension is, in fact, relieved, right? I mean, there's two very different scenarios. We've talked about them before. One scenario, if we sort of draw a measured move here to say what happened over here, we had about a, a 40 something percent correction after the tension was relieved. And what's interesting is that it took us back down just below the bottom of the range. Okay, so we followed this range before. This range more or less was between say seven to $14 and maybe six to $14. But ultimately we, we ended up going back down to the pot bottom of the range and we actually put in a lower low. Now, if you look at the same range over here where EtherUSD is, is currently sitting at, to, if we fall below the bottom of the range and go down uh, the same amount that we did over here, then you would again be looking at basically going back down to the bottom of the range close to around $1,700 or so, right? If I, if I just sort of draw this down a little bit, you'd be talking about going close again to the bottom of the range if the, if the tension is ultimately to be relieved. 
So in this scenario, it's actually a bit more bullish because you go back down to the bottom of the range one more time, and then following that, you then see a breakout. But it doesn't mean that it would be fun having to experience the tension being released because, I mean, again, a 40% drop isn't really fun for anyone. Okay, so that's one scenario. The other scenario, if the tension is relieved, would be, you know, what, what some people would call a crypto winter, right? That would be, you know, a scenario where it drops a lot. And I, I, I assure you, I don't think anyone's looking, looking forward to that potentially playing out. But that would be a completely different scenario altogether. OK, but you need to be prepared for these scenarios, right? One of the scenarios involves just going back down to the bottom of the range at, say, seventeen hundred dollars, eighteen hundred dollars in the event that Bitcoin gives away 38K. And then the other one involves going down a lot more. Now, I, I mean, again, I mean, I, I don't personally think ETH is going to go down 88 percent from the bottom of this range. I mean, that would put it at at um, at 300 bucks which is, I mean, that's even above the, um, or that's even below the regression band for Ethereum, right? So the $300 is actually even below the regression band. The fair value fit to non-bubble data on ETH is, is about twice that. So, you know, I look at the chart and I say, well, we're, we're currently in a risk-off environment. I would love to see Ethereum hold this, hold this range and continue to push higher. Um, but I also see these sort of macroeconomic headwinds that we're facing and how a lot of people have gone risk off. And, you know, I, I don't remain the most short term optimistic. OK, so what I would say is if we break back up here to the upside, OK, if we break back up here and we're able to, you know, it's kind of come back above this. And obviously this sort of analysis is off and it's not going to play out. But if we break this trend line and we see a fairly rapid descent back down to the bottom of the same range, I think the main area to watch for would be the summer, basically the summer lows. OK, I think that would be the main area to, to keep an eye on as the year continues to progress, because you have to imagine that if, if the trend breaks and, and we see some type of a sell off back down to the bottom of the range, that would be a very difficult time for a lot of people. And, and we need to stay apathetic towards what the market does and just focus on what does the data say. So I think the thing to watch for would be, does this range break down? I mean, if, if we sort of bounce back off of it, that would be the time where we finally break back up potentially in a sustainable way back, back up to the upside, which I mean, I still think this range here looks more similar to this one over here than than this one. This one was a lot more a, a lot more aggressive than I think the one we've seen over the last year. But this is something I think people should watch. Even if even if 2023 ends up being a great year for ETH, it doesn't change the fact that 2022 could be could be continued to be, to be a bit of a grind where it's just choppy. It it really makes it difficult on investors to stand you know to just stick in the market. Um, so this is just something I, I wanted to show people the sort of will the tension be relieved? Sometimes relieving the tension isn't a bad thing if it if it means no longer have to having to worry about some uptrend continuing to, to hold. Bitcoin is going through the same type of thing. It's trying to hold its own uptrend that it's been it's been holding on to for a while. So, you know, let's not forget that. I mean, if you if you go and look at, at, say, like the daily candles on Bitcoin, they're sort of coinciding with each other. Right. Like you have you have if you connect the wicks, you can see that Bitcoin has been more or less testing the bottom of, of this channel as well. If you wanted to draw it, maybe even more conservative and connect these wicks. You could argue that that it could go all the way down to, you know, it's a 35K before bouncing. But arguably, Bitcoin is in danger of putting in a lower low. And I would have to imagine that if Bitcoin puts in a lower low, then Ethereum would also likely break down below its uptrend as well. And so it is something I think that's that's important to watch. So I would have to imagine that if Bitcoin goes back down to its summer lows, then you would likely see Ethereum also testing its summer lows. Okay, so that would correspond to Bitcoin at around 30k plus or minus a couple k, and and then for Ethereum, um, for Ethereum it would actually correspond to. Sorry, I can't find the chart I was looking at. For Ethereum, it, it would actually correspond to, uh, you know, basically testing testing just below two thousand dollars would be the the same level if, if Bitcoin were to put down put in its own lower low. So I think this is an important level to watch. Will the uptrend hold or will the tension be relieved? And then we, we ultimately go into some new type of trend, whether whether it means we, we eventually then break out over the months that follow it or we have to deal with a, bear, a longer bear market. 
Um, we obviously can't know at this point, but that's at least something I think to, to watch here over the coming months is if the if this uptrend breaks and we come back down to the bottom of it, what happens there? Do we bounce? I think a lot of it will ultimately just depend on how hawkish the Fed remains and, and whether the dollar continues to rally. I mean, if the dollar continues to rally like this, I think it's going to make it hard for, for crypto investors and, and equity investors. If the dollar sort of rolls back over, then then you go back into into a potential accumulation phase or or uh, a parabolic move by by crypto. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you subscribe, give the video a thumbs up. We have Into the Cryptoverse Premium at IntoTheCryptoverse.com. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.